The four color theorem tells us that if you want to color some map so that your regions, be them countries or states or whatever they are, are each color different whenever they're next to each other so you can distinguish them, you only need four colors. Although this fact was first observed in the mid-1800s, it took mathematicians over a hundred years to fully prove it, and even then, it caused immense controversy. Think back. To prove the five-color theorem, that is that only five colors are needed, we are able to express the problem in terms of graphs. We say, let each country or region represent a vertex, and we'll draw an edge between two countries if those countries are connected and share a border. Then the problem becomes, can we color the vertices on our graph so that no two adjacent vertices, that is no two vertices connected by an edge, are colored the same color? It wasn't that difficult to prove that we could get away with using just five colors. But then when we looked at Kemp's proof for four colors, we discovered in it a subtle but fatal flaw. Kemp hadn't fully considered all the possibilities of what might happen inside of the graph. For the next hundred years after Kemp, mathematicians would make further and further progress on this, proving the theorem for maps with only a couple dozen regions, or, or getting closer or closer and closer to the proof. But it wasn't until 1976 when Appel and Haken finally offered a complete proof. For their proof, they had many cases or configurations they had to consider. They called this the unavoidable set. They argued that within any graph, any simple planar graph, there would exist one of these unavoidable configurations. Hence, if they could show that if there was a way to color the graph that had each of these configurations, then they were done. The problem? There were hundreds of these. In fact, in their original paper, there were 1,936 different unavoidable configurations they had to consider for each one of them, showing that there was some valid coloring. That's a massive amount of work, more work than any human or even team of mathematicians could do. Now, eventually they were able to get that number down a little bit. There were some redundancies that they were able to eliminate, but still, far too much work for a human to do. Fortunately, they had the aid of a computer, allowing them to publish the first major computer assistant proof. But when they did this, it caused controversy. Mathematicians asked, is this a valid proof? Are we going to allow computers to do our mathematics for us now? It's not just the fact the computers were, were doing some simple arithmetic, but the computer was doing an essential part of the proof. Mathematicians worried, might this be changing the very nature of mathematics? After all, mathematics is not like the empirical sciences. We are not dependent upon instruments. We don't need telescopes or fancy microscopes to see what's going on. And as such, mathematicians pride themselves on the purity of their work. In other fields, if there's some error in the instrument, it can corrupt the data, making their results questionable. But in mathematics, it is all the result of pure deduction. Hence, we can be absolutely certain of the, 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 the nature of our work. We can be certain of the results, that they are true today and they'll be true forever. If we are beginning to depend upon computers, some asked, is that changing the very nature of mathematics? It's not just an issue of could have the computer made a mistake. After all, you can have independent computers and independent programs verify the result. And we know that humans can make mistakes too. After all, Kemp had published a proof that was accepted by the mathematics community for a decade before a flaw was found in it. Rather, there were some more subtle questions being asked about what is the philosophical significance of this. One such paper that was published in 1979, entitled The Four Color Theorem and Its Philosophical Significance, posed the question by giving an analogy. They say, imagine if we had some other universe of mathematics, perhaps we could call it Martian mathematics. And imagine this Martian mathematics developed very similar to mathematics on planet Earth. 
except in Martian mathematics, there was a mathematical genius by the name of Simon. Now, Simon went along and proved mathematics as mathematicians were used to Simon proving it. But every so often, Simon would come up against a very challenging problem. And Simon would simply report, I have a solution to this problem, but it's too complicated for me to explain to you. So just trust me. And the Martian mathematicians, because Simon had proved himself to be a great mathematician, came to accept him. So if you would look in the Martian math textbooks, much of it would have regular proofs. But every so often, there would be some theorem, and the proof would simply say, Simon says. Now, this might seem like an absurd scenario, but the point of this paper is, isn't that what's beginning to happen in mathematics if we're letting computers serve the role as Simon? There are some problems that we can't do, but the computer says. Well, maybe not. I mean, even this paper recognized that we know what the computer is doing. We know the general shape of the proof. And yet, it presents a question that has ongoing relevance for us today. This paper posed the question asking, if, if one day computers became sufficiently sophisticated so that they were doing mathematics and couldn't even explain to us the general shape of the proof, you might imagine we developed some very sophisticated artificial intelligence. Perhaps we call it Simon. And that artificial intelligence goes and does all the mathematics as we typically do and gets all the results we typically do. But then the artificial intelligence reports to have solved some open problem that the mathematics community has been unable to solve, something like the Riemann hypothesis. And so we go and we try and get a printout of how the artificial intelligence did it. But all we can find is that it's so complicated, we can't even begin to understand the approach of the artificial intelligence. Would we accept that result? See, it doesn't seem like the computer assistant role in the four color theorem really fundamentally changed the nature of mathematics. After all, today, mathematicians are pretty comfortable using computers in their proofs. But it does raise the question that as we move into an era of artificial intelligence, what will constitute mathematics in this new era? Will mathematics continue to be a distinctly human activity? Or will it take on a new shape, a new form?